built toward you to the end he may be he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before god even our father at the coming at the coming of our lord jesus christ with all his saints in chapter 4 is referred to again the coming of the lord we're looking at it from verse 13 but i will not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him but this will say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord shall not hinder or prevent or disturb them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. In every chapter, the coming of the Lord be referred to. Look at chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that we write that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night is coming. Look at chapter 1 of the of uh, Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. And to you. What trouble rest with us when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You see, Christ is coming over and over. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, we we'll beseech you that Christ is coming. Remember that. And then it says that she be not so shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by the word, nor by the letters from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. A falling away and we're seeing that all around falling away from sound doctrine falling away from righteousness falling away from holiness emphasis in the churches as a falling away already and it says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition i pray you'll not follow after them i said you'll not follow after them chapter 3 verse 5 chapter 3 verse 5 and the lord directs your hearts into the love of god and into the patient waiting for christ into the patient waiting for christ that tells us then that the lord is coming and of course the people of god knew that even from the time of job job chapter 19 job chapter 19 reading from verse 25 19 25 for i know that my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall i see god whom i shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another though my race be consumed within me that's the expectation in the heart of all the saints of god in the hearts of all the people of god even from that time in the old testament that the lord the redeemer is coming again and we're waiting for him first corinthians chapter 1 verse 7 verse 8 first corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 7 and reading from verse 8 so that ye come behind in no gift, but beyond the gifts, beyond the ministry, 
and beyond the opportunity of service waiting for the coming of our lord jesus christ expectation in the hearts of all the people of god and they lived as if he might come today they lived as if he might come this very week with that expectation in their hearts living in righteousness and holiness all the days of their lives expecting that when the lord comes the people will rapture the people will resurrect the people you will take away are the people that have lived a life that showed conversion, repentance, turning, holiness, righteousness, sanctification. In verse 8, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that she may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 12. In Luke chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 34. Luke chapter 12, verse 34. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If your treasure is in heaven, your heart will be there. Your desires in heaven, your heart will be there. Your joy in heaven, your heart will be there. Your Christ in heaven, the most important person to you, your heart will be there. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be guarded about. And your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, men that wait for their Lord, like men that wait expectantly for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. I pray you'll be ready. I said, I pray you'll be ready. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down, to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so blessed at those servants, and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour, what time, what period, and what moment the thief would come, he would have watched, not, and not to have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, by repenting, by turning, by being converted, by being saved, by being righteous, by being holy, by being obedient to the word of the Lord, not the word of man. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Chapter 21 of Luke. Luke chapter 21. I'm reading there from verse 34. Luke chapter 21. Reading from verse 34. And take it to yourselves. Lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. These were believers who are not drinking alcohol. But there are some people that little things intoxicate them, like alcohol, marriage, celebration wedding intoxicates them like alcohol graduation matriculation intoxicates them like alcohol childbirth naming ceremony intoxicate them like alcohol they lose all the doctrine all the conviction everything they ever learned because of marriage wedding childbirth naming ceremony burial funeral ceremony it intoxicates them like alcohol and the lord said watch that that day doesn't come upon you unawares because so that the day come upon you unawares verse 35 verse is near shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth, watch ye therefore, and pray always, 
that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. The Lord is coming. He wants you, he wants me, he wants us, he wants the whole church to be ready for his coming. How do you get ready? Repenting, turning, living a righteous life, a holy life, an obedient life, a sober life. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. That means suddenly, when people are not expecting, blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and you see a shame. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Verse 3. In Second Peter chapter 3, from verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, scorners, jesters, doubters, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. When Noah announced that the judgment was coming, he jested, they scorned, they scorched. How can that happen? They were willingly, deliberately, intentionally ignorant. And in these last days, we have a repetition of that. That's why the apostle is warning us, it says in verse 7, but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in stone and reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is of the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us world, not willing that any should perish. I pray you'll not perish. By repentance, I pray you'll not perish. By turning away from all your sins, I pray you'll not perish. By life of obedience and holiness unto the Lord, every moment of your life, not yielding. To the influence of scorners and scoffers, living a life pleasing unto the Lord in righteousness and holiness all the days of your life. I pray you'll not perish in Jesus' name. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burnt up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be? In all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and listening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth 
wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that she looked for such things, are you looking for the coming of the Lord? Are you waiting for the coming of the Lord? If you are doing that in your own heart, it says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that she looked for such things, be diligent, not careless, not negligent, not carefree, not unconcerned. Be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. I pray the Lord will make us ready. I said he'll make us ready. I said he'll make you ready. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord. We've heard much. We've heard much. That's the word of the Lord. We receive it as the word of the Lord, not as the word of a man. I said, get up. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. The church in Thessalonica, wonderful church. Because the members had heard the word. The members had heard the transforming word of the gospel. And they turned. And they repented. Bring yourself before the Lord. And say, Lord, I repent. Not the reason we came to the retreat. We didn't come here to just jest, joke, play, celebrate, clap. Become childish. Forget ourselves. Lose focus. Keep your focus. And tell the Lord, Lord, I've heard your word. Wonderful unity. The about Greeks, honorable women, cheap women, wise, educated. Highly exalted men there. I don't worship us there. A mighty transformation took place. Pray that that same mighty transformation will take place in your heart, in your life. Evidence of salvation. Evidence of conversion. Evidence of a new life. Evidence of eternal life. Evidence that we're not just religious, righteous. Evidence that we came and we turned away from the dead gods of the land. And we turned unto the living God. And that we're not like the religious people of this land. Thousands and millions run into places of worship. And all they do is continue in their sin, in their evil, in their idolatry, in their witchcraft, in their sorcery, in their cultism, in their evil gang, in their adultery, their fornication, in their nightclubs, the worldly dancing. Even in their churches. But the Lord has called us. And has given us his word. And the very first thing you do. Responding to that word. Is to repent and to turn. Be righteous. Be cleansed, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Purified, purged. Waiting for the coming of the Lord. Getting ready for heaven. That's how the people of Nineveh received the word from the king. To the peasants, the people. 
the old and the young, the men and the women, the high and the lowly, the officers and the ministers and the cabinet of the king of Nineveh. Everyone received the word. Nay, it was not for joke. It was not just in time. Repenting time. Turning time. Transformation time. They saw the face of the Lord. They got the mercy of the Lord. Forgiveness. Change of life. Transformation. That's what the Jews, the Greeks, the men, the women, the young, the old. That's what they did in Thessalonica. They turned, they turned, they turned, they turned, so become hard in the sin is dangerous, they turned, to be heady. On the way to hell, it's dangerous. They turned. They didn't play with their destiny. They turned. They didn't play with the destiny of their neighbors, the destiny of the church. The destiny of the congregation they encouraged others to turn. The lives became radiant, righteous, rapturable. That's what the Lord is expecting. Not for my sake. Not for leaders' sakes. Not for a good coordinator's sake. Not for a coordinator's sake. Not for a, not for a national leader's sake. For the sake of your own soul. For the sake of eternity. The torch. All frivolity gone, all carelessness gone, all sinful habits gone. They turned and they got involved in turning others, they were transformed and they got involved in transforming others, they became soul winners. So winners, not just winners, 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 success winners, blessing winners, so winners.